Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, another dive into the mailbag. Last week, I took on some viewer questions that dealt with heat treating. Today, just kind of a mixed bag, a variety of different kinds of questions that I've had from viewers in recent months. All right, first question. Uh, a viewer asked me, is there an advantage to a chisel grind? Um, he w you know, has seen some, uh, some of the Japanese um, cooking knives, for instance, which have a, uh, what's known as a chisel grind, and his thinking was that that seemed like a, a way of making a knife very sharp and uh, you know, wanted to know if that was good for sort of general use knives. So uh, I've got a variety of perspectives on this and I don't wanna beat this up too much, but um, let me start by saying this. The sharpness of a knife is determined by the angle of the blade. So on a chisel ground knife, you have one side that's flat, then the other has a flat piece and then uh, a bevel that comes down just on one side just like you'd see on the front of a chisel. Now, if you, if you take that angle and just turn it this way, then all you have is just a normal knife. So in and of itself, there's absolutely nothing special about a chisel grind. It's just, you know, whatever angle it's, it's ground at, that's whatever angle it's ground at. And it's no different in that respect from uh, any other knife that's, that's ground symmetrically with bevels on both sides. So why would anybody bother with chisel grinding in the first place? Well, a couple reasons. Now the first is kind of specific to Japanese knives, though there are other knives uh, that, are, that are ground this way. Instead of like most Western knives, which come down to a little micro bevel at the bottom, that, and that's the part that you resharpen, Japanese knives typically come all the way straight to the edge. Um, and so uh, that makes for a really, really sharp knife. Now, here's the maintenance issue. Um, if you have to sharpen them, you have to sharpen that entire bevel. Um, and so uh, if, you are, if you have a symmetrical knife, that means you're gonna have to sharpen two bevels and you're, it's just gonna take a lot of maintenance. So if you sharpen only on one side, that means you can take that to a, gr a grinding stone Japanese stones are typically sharpened on uh, sort of brick-shaped um, uh, sharpening stones. And you scrub one side back and forth, and you can pretty quickly get that back to uh, a very sharp condition. They typically have a little hollow on the back side of the knife, not always, but it's not unusual for that to happen, leaving just a tiny little exposed part all around the edge and you just sharpen that little piece and you don't have to sharpen enormous amounts of steel and that makes a knife that's fairly easy to maintain um, but will give you just an enormously sharp edge. So what's the disadvantage of that type of knife? Why aren't all knives made that way? Well, if you have a normal uh, you know, double beveled uh, blade that is symmetrical bevels, one on each side, the axis of the knife as it extends through the handle into your hand, goes right straight down the middle of those two bevels. Whereas with a chisel ground blade, it follows the, the, the axis of the knife follows the back of the knife. And if you use a knife like that that wants to go straight down like so, um, if you try and cut hard things, it has a tendency to bind up in the cut and, and you know, try and try and hook on you. So that kind of knife is most appropriate for fairly soft materials. You'll find them in, uh, you know, in, in Japanese cooking. They're especially used for um, fish and uh, other fairly soft materials. So uh, it's not necessarily an ideal general purpose um, blade. I'm sure I'll find people who disagree with me on that, but that's my two cents on that subject. <laughs> So second question, uh, I got a note from a guy who um, had made a skew chisel, which is a, a type of chisel used for uh, woodworking, uh, particularly on, on lathes. 
And uh, so he had made a skew chisel out of an old file. So the problem he was having was that uh, it wasn't holding an edge very well, and he was concerned that he had overheated it while grinding it on the bench grinder. Um, so what he wanted to know was, was he going to have to um, harden that steel again? You know, one of the reasons he'd used the file in the first place was, hey, it's an already uh, hardened piece of steel. If I can just grind it to the right shape, I, I don't have to go through this additional step of heat treating, which requires, you know, more gear than, than he may have had. So what I said to him was, uh, you don't need to heat treat it. Probably what did happen is that indeed you had overheated it when uh, uh, grinding it. I think he was grinding it on a, on a bench stone uh, or bench grinder. Um, so, you know, what I said is just grind through that little uh, portion that probably overheated um, on your bench grinder and just be real careful about the heat and you can just be kind of dunking it down in a, a bucket of water or something as you go and uh, that'll keep it from, uh, from overheating. Uh, once you grind through the part that's, that's gotten softened because it got overheated, you're good to go. If you do that, the one caution I'd give you is that sucker will rust in a heartbeat. So the second you get done with it, dry it off, you know, heat it up maybe with a hair dryer or something that'll dry all the moisture off of it, oil it, and uh, that way it'll keep it from, uh, from uh, rusting. Final question, and this one was less a question about technique or something, but I frequently get uh, questions from folks who ask if I restore knives. And, uh, you know, the, the gentleman who wrote to me recently had uh, an old K-bar knife and wanted to know if I would be able to restore it. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with K-bar knives, which probably most of you are, they have, you know, that stacked leather handle, and those will tend to dry out and shrink and crack and so forth. Um, and of course, uh, it's carbon steel, so it probably rusted a little bit. There's a lot of things that you might want to do to try and restore a knife like that. Well, here's the answer that I always give people. It's really complicated to restore any kind of knife. Before you see the knife, you just don't know what you're going to be looking at. Uh, you may have to disassemble the knife um, absolutely, completely, uh, you, you know, and there are just a, a lot of difficulties in restoring knives. Frequently, say with a K-bar knife, for instance, the, the value of the knife, even nicely restored, is going to be significantly lower than the cost of what it would require to have a skilled craftsman um, you know, go to all the trouble of restoring that knife. Um, it would probably cost, in fact, more money to restore a knife like that than it would you know, cost to, to make one from scratch. Not saying no Smiths will do this, but uh, you know it just it's a very, very time consuming job, and a lot of times you get into it and you don't realize until you kind of get deep into it all the complexities that you're going to run into, and it can just take an enormous amount of time. If you're inclined to do that sort of work, it can be really fun, but very, very hard to do for a profit. So today we're not talking about stuff that there's really a hard and fast right or wrong answer to. Um, more just the, here's my perspective on these questions and uh, you know I hope there are a few nuggets there that uh, might have been useful to you. Um, thanks for stopping in with us and we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video don't forget to subscribe. Also click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!